for the countdown to the launch uh, this morning of the shuttle Columbia, now in its final moments. And CNN's John Holloman is here with the very latest. John? It's been picture perfect so far. T minus one minute and 40 Everything seconds, launch commentator good. Bruce Buck Buckingham says. Countdown continues for shuttle Columbia and its crew of five astronauts. Commander John Casper says he expects this 14-day mission to be a stepping stone to the U.S. Russian space station. Casper will be at the controls with pilot Andy Allen as the shuttle lifts off in just a few seconds. Things to look for in the final seconds of the countdown, Bob and Andrea, are the firing of the three main engines at the base of Columbia. There's a spark generator which will make sure the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen being pumped into the engines combines and blows up. That's what it's supposed to do. If um, the rockets do not all fire correctly, or these engines, during the five seconds before liftoff, they will be shut down and the mission will be postponed probably till tomorrow or the next day. At the zero point in the countdown, an electrical system will ignite the propellant in those two white solid rocket boosters on each side of the shuttle. After those rockets start to burn, there's no turning back for the shuttle. You can see the countdown clock there at the lower right-hand corner of your screen and a wide picture from a helicopter of the pad. We're going to listen in now to the final few seconds of the countdown for the last 30 seconds. I'll tell you this before we do that. The crew is smaller than usual, only five astronauts. Onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20. 15. 11. 10. 9. 8. 7. We have a go for main engine. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia as NASA continues on the cutting edge of microgravity research. Houston's now controlling. Houston. Roger roll, Columbia. Mission Control sees a good roll maneuver, placing Columbia on the proper heading. Three good engines at 104%. engines are throttling back now, easing the buildup of aerodynamic loads as Columbia continues to accelerate rapidly through the dense lower altitudes. Three engines now at 67%. Columbia is traveling over 500 miles an hour at 52 seconds. All systems are performing well. Columbia, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. All three engines are now running at full throttle. All systems are performing well. Altitude is now 59,000 feet, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Columbia is traveling over 1,000 miles per hour at 1 minute 29 seconds. Columbia continues to climb at a relatively steep angle at this point, relying heavily on the solid rocket boosters to triple its rate of speed over the next 60 seconds. Delivering a combined 6.5 million pounds of thrust, the boosters will burn out and separate at 2 minutes 6 seconds. Time now 1 minute 48 seconds. All systems are performing well. Altitude 116,000 feet, downrange distance 18 nautical miles. There go the solid rocket boosters. They've uh, done what they were supposed to do to get this thing uh, traveling at more than 1,000 miles an hour. They've filed off. What's going to happen in the next um, six minutes or so? The three main engines will take the shuttle to an altitude above the Earth of 106, or rather 160 miles. And uh, the ground controllers are telling the astronauts everything's going exactly the way it's supposed to. Um, while they're up there, uh, this could be a long mission, Bob and Andrea. The, the crew's going to be in space for about 14 days. If everything goes perfectly, they will come back to Earth 20 minutes less than the record-breaking shuttle mission of um, 14 days and 10 minutes, which was conducted about a year ago. If uh, the astronauts are doing everything in their power to make sure that they get to break the record and stay up maybe one more orbit so uh, they can be in space longer than anybody else. Look at the pictures. 
NASA That's traveling take, over 3,200 yeah. miles per hour. Yeah, and then they would break the record. But there are plans, and NASA's scheduled, to keep a shuttle in orbit for 16 days, um, not in 1994, but probably in the early part of 1995. So NASA uh, engineers have a, a television camera, which is showing us this picture. Uh, it's on the ground at the Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle is 40 miles away. Imagine a TV camera that can take a picture like that from 40 miles away. The lens at the end of this camera is longer than the distance from me to you, Andre. I mean, it's it's very long. It's about eight feet long, and the optics in that and are so mirrored good. on top of it, right? Yeah, sure. yeah. It's like a telescope almost, but it uh, allows us to see these pictures. The um, um, the next six or seven minutes will probably be the most exciting six or seven minutes in the lives of the five people aboard this shuttle. They're going to be doing a lot of experiments, which will eventually show up in the U.S. Russian space station. So. Uh, they're gonna, it's not as glamorous as some of the previous shuttle missions, no spacewalk set up for this, but um, they say that what they'll be able to do here is take one more step toward the space station, which as you know has been in trouble on Capitol Hill in the United States, and uh, uh, they are hoping that they'll do enough good work so that Congress will continue to fund NASA and the space station program, which uh, they'd like to be riding on by 1997 or so. John Holliman, we'll see you over the next two weeks. Okie doke, I'll A be lot. here. All right. <laughs> Thanks, John. And that does it for Daybreak for this week. I'm Andrea Arsenault. We do thank you for joining us. I'm Bob Kang. Have a good weekend. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine. Start. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Columbia as NASA continues on the cutting edge of microgravity research. Columbia's two-week mission is ending just 57 minutes shy of a shuttle record. The trip was devoted entirely to science, and NASA is calling it an unqualified success. U.S. To Columbia on energy at the 180. Although the Columbia crew Columbia wanted to spend another work. hour and a half in space to break the shuttle endurance record, the astronaut crew will be landing in Florida about two minutes from right now. Let me show you the live picture from NASA as Columbia makes its final approach to the Kennedy Space Center landing strip. Some ground fog at the landing strip about an hour ago is now blown off. Um, this is an amazing picture. You can see directly under the shuttle, although it is more than five miles away. After the shuttle touches down, a parachute will come out of the tail to slow its progress down the runway. That was added to the shuttle years ago to make... Uh, the braking process for the spaceship easier. The astronauts have been around the world 223 times since they left the Kennedy Space Center strip two weeks ago. They have traveled 5,820,146 miles since leaving the Earth March the 4th. There are 60 experiments aboard, and ground-based managers say all of the experiments worked well, some better than expected. The crew grew protein crystals, which will be used by medical researchers in the search for cures for diseases, including AIDS and cancer. The astronauts use new furnaces, which can melt and cool metal for future space station factories. And they even tested scale models of some of the structural framework, which will actually be used to build the space station. You can see the shuttle from various camera angles now. As it comes down, from uh, my vantage point, the uh, landing gear not down yet, the, uh, um, the rear wheels or the front wheels. The last time a crew of astronauts was in space for this long, medical experts on the ground wanted the astronauts to stay on their backs for a few hours after landing, and they were carried off the shuttle on stretchers. Don't know if that'll happen this time or not. In the final uh, run-in, we'll just listen to uh, NASA's mission control talk about the landing. Clyde slope on center line now. just prior to flaring out before uh, touchdown. Beautiful day in Florida today. About 30 see. seconds away from touchdown, runway 33. Gear is down. Coming in about 205 knots. About 200 miles an hour now. Touchdown, main gear.
chute, drag chute coming out and the nose gear touching down. Roger, wheel stop, John. Welcome home. Thanks for a great job and a fantastic two weeks of microgravity research. That was Mission Control in Houston talking to Shuttle Commander John Casper, telling him he had done a good job along with his crew of uh, three other men and one woman. You can see there the shuttle uh, at a full stop. What will happen over the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour is that uh, ground crews will go out and make the shuttle safe, get rid of any excess chemicals that might be uh, in various tanks aboard. One thing we don't know is whether the uh, crew is going to feel like getting up and walking out of the shuttle and do the walk around that astronauts traditionally do. The last time a crew was up in space for this period of time, the uh, medical experts on the ground didn't want the astronauts to get up and do the walk around. They carried them out on stretchers. Coming up tomorrow, NASA plans to roll the shuttle Endeavour out to launch pad 39A. The six astronauts selected for that mission will use a space radar system to map the surface of planet Earth. A system similar to this has mapped the surface of Mars and Venus and provided amazing pictures of those planets. Maybe next month's shuttle mission will be able to do the same thing for this planet. Launch is scheduled for April the 7th, and we'll be here, of course. Andrea?